In video number 36, we started dealing with quadratic uh, expressions, and we had uh, this kind of an equation, two variables, x and y, a coefficient for x squared and y squared, a cross term, and then just x and y with their respective coefficients set equal to some constant. And this part of the equation we express like this. Then these remaining terms we could just be a row vector DE made out of these two coefficients times a column vector XY because this would just be DX plus EY equals F. And again, we start discussing this in video number 36. Um, before we continue, we want to remind you that the playlist here for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org. Now, this type of equation manifests itself in different ways when we're discussing um, even such things as um, straightforward circles or ellipses and so forth. And we have several examples of that. Um, let's just kind of get things started by taking the simplest type of example. S something that can be um, solved just by using, um, by completing a square. For example, suppose we have this equation. We have an x squared multiplied by a coefficient, say 9. And then we have a y squared multiplied by its coefficient. And then we have, say, minus 18x plus 16y equals some constant, say, 11. Notice in this equation, there is no xy term. OK, we can combine terms here. We would have 9 times x squared minus 2x plus 4 times y squared plus 4y equals 11. This should be y squared here. OK, now we can try to express this then by completing the square. We could say, well, this, if we had x minus 1 squared, that would be x squared minus 2x plus 1. So if we had x, one, x minus 1 squared minus 1, it would equal this. So we have x minus 1 squared minus 1. That will equal x squared minus 2x. So we can substitute this for this. And we will have 9 times x minus 1 squared minus 1. Then for this part, y squared plus 4y, let's erase this and see how we, be, how we would deal with that term. y squared plus 4y, if we had y plus 2 squared, that would be y squared plus 4y plus 
plus 4. So this minus 4 would be this. So we had y plus 2 squared minus 4. That will equal y plus that will equal y squared plus 4y. So for this, we can write in this right here. So we have plus 4 times this term squared minus 4 equals 11. Or here we have 9 times x minus 1 squared minus 9 plus 4 multiplying across here times y plus 2 squared minus 16 equals 11. Or this is minus 25. Bring it over here. That's plus 25. 25 plus 11 is 36. Then on this side we have, let's write it down here further. We have this 9x minus 1 squared plus 4 y plus 2 squared equals 36. Minus 25, remember that's plus 25. 25 plus 11 is 36. We have this term and this term left over. Now divide both sides of the equation by 36. And we have x minus 1 divided by 4 plus y plus 2 squared divided by 9 equals 1. And of course, what we have here then is the equation of ellipse in standard form. We could say, well, we'll let x prime be this, let y prime be this, and then we would have x prime squared over 4 plus y prime squared over 9 equals 1. Now to show this graphically then, again, this is a very straightforward example. We have x prime we called x minus 1, and y prime we called y plus 2. Well now, for our, we can say that we can have new axis, x prime and y prime, we're going to be on the x prime axis whenever y prime is 0, and y prime will always be 0 when y equals minus 2. So when y equals minus 2, that is the x prime axis. Along here, y prime is always 0. And y prime will always be 0 when y equals minus 2. Likewise, on the y prime axis, x prime will always be 0. And x prime will always be 0 when x equals 1. So here then is the x prime and the y prime axis where they intersect is at the point 1 minus 2. Then from here, from this equation then, we can try to 
sketch in the ellipse. Here this will be going up three, down three, to the right two, to the left two, and then sketch it in. So this equation right here, where there is no xy term, this just simply indicates to us that the center of the system, this zero, 0, point, has been transferred to the right and down, so that this is now the center of our system at the point 1 minus 2. So this is just a simple translation of the axis. Nothing special here. But suppose we had a situation where the axis was not only translated, but it was also rotated. Then in, when that happens, in your equation here, you will start to pick up some xy terms. And then that will be the situation here at the more general equation. With what we had to deal with in this problem, right here, this was zero. We just had x terms, y terms, an x and a y, and that was just simply a problem where we had a translation of the origin of the axis. Now, in our other videos, we're going to have xy terms where the origin of the axis is not only translated, but it is also rotated. And in the future videos, we'll see how to handle those kinds of problems.